Okay, so uh, hi everyone and welcome to the StreamZ Community Meeting on March 21st, 2024. So is there uh, anything, any other business you want to start with? Any questions, any specific issues you want to raise or something like that? It seems not. So uh, I added a couple of uh, PRs here. Uh, the first one is from the previous uh, community meeting because um, yeah, there was something that Federico was going to do about pinging the user to engage, right? I see the user replied, but then after two weeks, nothing happened. So any news from this, Federico? Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you see he just rebase one time, but I guess he needs more rebasing. And then he still needs to address the few comments that are still there. Okay, so I guess we are going to wait, or maybe uh, you can, um, yeah, at some point, maybe you can double check with the user if uh, he has any issues or problems uh, rebasing. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Fede. And the next one was actually, yeah, one waiting for uh, reviews. Yeah, mostly it was waiting uh, for the latest comment from Jakub. I think that Kate uh, addressed all the comments from me and Jakub. Um, I was just going to say that I approved the PR. Uh, Kate, I started the migration um, pipeline because there were a couple of, yes, anyway, <coughs> minor changes uh, to the migration utils, yeah. but it's better to run any pipeline that this stuff is involved. Uh, so I guess we are waiting for uh, Jakub uh, approval, unless there are any other maintainers uh, interested to, to have a review on this. Thanks, Ali. I'll keep an eye on the result for the migration. Yeah, it should not take uh, long. I mean, uh, it should be a couple of hours, I guess, not uh, four and more hours like the regression one. So thank you very much for the PR. It was a great work. It, I, I, I would say now the code related to the certificates is really more understandable than how things are moving around and all the certificates related stuff. Okay, I have nothing more around the PRs or any issues. Uh, if no one has uh, other stuff like that, I would move to proposals. So there were different proposals, some new uh, open across the last uh, days. So this one uh, is a proposal for, far, for passing ACLs uh, in uh, JWT. I guess already Jakub and, um, yeah, and Marco as the SME uh, are engaging with the, the, um, the user. So yeah, this is the first one, I guess that if you have time should take a look at this. The next one. Yeah, that's about a way for um, uh, having some um, so mounting volumes. Uh, it was mostly related to, I guess, Kafka Connect here. But of course, Jakub made the point that we should um, have some kind of more general solution, not just addressing a specific use case. So anyway, another interested P proposal to, to take a look. And the next one. Yeah, here we are discussing, uh, <coughs> uh, there are uh, a couple of um, configuration parameters uh, like uh, yeah, the, the inactivity timeout um, in the HTTP bridge, which are exposed in the bridge. So you can use them if you run the bridge on bare metal or virtual machine. But right now you can't configure uh, uh, in the Kafka bridge custom resource. So from an operator perspective, 
So this is a proposal to to yeah to add this uh, kind of information to the Kafka Bridge custom resource. So here Stefan is kind of adding and proposing two versions, and we are having a discussion on them. So any feedback, any opinions is uh, really welcome here. Then I will go to the next one. Yeah, this is uh, the introduction of the Kafka Roller 2.0. Uh, I already see Tom Bentley and um, Federico engaged with uh, this proposal. I will uh, find some time to, to take a look as well. Yeah, this is, I guess, one of the most interested one. And the last one, I guess, was the one from Marosh. Yes, uh, introducing some performance testing uh, within StreamZ. Again, uh, from my side, I didn't have the time to take a look yet. Federico seems to be everywhere, so already took a look at the proposal. I will jump in it as soon as possible, and the same for the others when you have time. So we have a bunch of different proposals this time at, uh, at the same time to review, which is kind of good. So anyone else has uh, any proposals or something that I missed? Questions, doubts? Uh, Paolo, uh, can I just quick give quick summary on the Kafka uh, roller proposal? Sure. Uh, just to give an idea what this is about uh, for yes, people absolutely. who hasn't seen yeah, this ahead, at all before. Yeah, so this is to introduce a new Kafka roller um, to replace the existing roller completely in the future. Um, so the new Kafka roller is um, only com work um, only for craft mode, um, so that when we remove Zookeeper away, the new the, the old roller can go away as well. Um, just a couple of things to highlight here. What we, you know, things that um, the main things that we're introducing here is um, the existing cra uh, roller uh, support craft, but there are still some edge cases to address. And back in September, October, me and Kate worked on supporting craft in the existing roller, and um, that had uh, that really proven a bit of a difficult work uh, because existing roller was quite uh, hard to extend. Also, there was some testability issue there, hence some of these edge cases weren't caught. Um, so it's uh, it's quite hard to introduce new changes to the roller because it's gone quite complicated and hard to follow. So the idea is to introduce a new roller that is hopefully more structured, simpler, and um, has more testability. And then the second main thing is the uh, the we can now um, uh, batch the brokers to restart in parallel um, without impacting the availability there. So um, there were some mentions in the community that um, people who have like large clusters with like tens and hundreds of brokers, the existing roller would, uh, well, it rolls uh, one broker at a time. And because of that, it can take a long time to finish rolling um, the brokers in a large cluster. So this introduces a change where you can batch brokers together and restart them at the same time. So that's the, the one of the main things that it's introducing. That's it. Yeah, thank you very much, Tina. Thank you very much for the summary. Um, one thing, one question maybe I have, uh, maybe you already said to me, just maybe remember. Um, this Kafka roller is uh, supporting only craft, right? So uh, we envisage in the proposal and implementation that uh, uh, when, for example, uh, you are migrating from Zookeeper to craft, as soon as the migration ends, uh, the operator will switch automatically to use the new roller, right? Yes, that's the idea. Um, yeah, in, in the migration code you introduced, there was a uh, is it label that uh, the new label that uh, shows the migration state? Um, so it will be switched based on that. Um, 
migration state. So when it's only fully migrated and running in craft mode. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So any more questions for, for Tina? Yeah. Do you, do you think we will replace the old roller or we will have uh, feature gates to give some time to test it? Um, so to, to, uh, in the proposal, the way it's written right now, it's not feature gated. It will be automatically switched on for all craft clusters so that we can, because craft is not production ready yet, so it'd be great to get um, people use it and get it tested early. Because I guess once we feature gate it, it will be slower to um, mass test it, I guess. Right, okay, makes sense, thanks. But of course, if you don't agree with that, yeah, feel free to add comments into the VR and get that into discussion. No, 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 uh, it makes sense to me uh, now that you explained, thanks. Yeah, thank you again, Tina. So if no more questions, I guess we can move to our preferred section, which is the issues triage. I should have already opened the issues here. Let's see. Okay. So the first one, I guess, was already triaged uh, some weeks ago. Yes, and uh, it was suggested that uh, Kate and Tina was going to were going to yeah to double check if there is an issue with the controller rules or not. Yeah, we've both been at Kafka Summit, so we haven't tried about this. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to reiterate on this, right? Yeah. Okay, thank from. you. Thank you. So something like... I guess something like this, right? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I will leave this as the need for triage. This one was opened by Fede. Uh, yeah, with a new method for the de decoding from B64. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, we already we already have a method which does uh, the encoding. Uh, so I introduced this one for the replication factor change feature, but now we found out that this is you. This can be used everywhere. Basically, there are lots of code points in which we can use it, and then I open this uh, issue to to do this task. It's, it's a good start, I, I think. Yeah, so I, I think that it makes sense uh, to reuse that method because we have it. So I would say something like uh, make sense to implement it. Um, yeah, so it's an enhancement. I guess we can uh, remove the needs triage and I also agree that's a good start. It's a good start at the help wanted or? Uh... Yeah, yeah, help wanted. Okay. at least 
the first part. Then there is a bug opened by a user. It seems that they are saying that in the unidirectional topic operator is missing uh, a metric. Uh, the stream is the resource state for each topic. Uh, Jakub was saying that the metric seems to be here. Okay, Jakub was taking a look at just the counter of the Kafka topic. It seems that uh, the previous topic operator, the bidirectional one, had something like a specific metric for each topic. Do you remember something like this, Fede, which is missing now in the unidirectional mm -hmm. topic operator? Uh, not right now, but I'll have a look uh, and, and post a comment. I haven't seen this one before. Okay, so uh, as triaged, I will say that uh, you are going to take a look at this one. Okay. Right. Okay. You just volunteered, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess we can remove the needs triage. This other one is about the flaky test. Do a lot of times today. Maybe it's something for, I don't know, wisdom on the call, Lukash, Marosh, someone. So I also waste this one uh, while testing the GA of the unidirectional topic operator, I I stumbled into this three or four times when running the whole test suite, unit and integration tests. Uh, but if you run this in isolation, it always works. So that's why I think it's like a test. Uh, I don't know if it will also happen if you run just the unit test suite but it must be uh, more than one, than one test, a group of tests, let me see. Okay, so any comment from, uh, I see Lukas Maros, we are on the call, uh, or uh, I will just tag you on the issue and uh, someone uh, will take a look at this. Uh, maybe I can take a look on that. You can assign me on that issue. Okay, thank you very much, Maros. and assign to see quick okay and i guess the last one the last one is fairly new yes five hours ago it's opened by jakub uh yeah i guess that uh, jakub was just tracking that after the proposal got accepted, as far as I remember, right? Yes, about the new way, the new quota API that, um, yeah, were approved uh, in order to define the usage of a quota plugin inside the stream the operator. Now we need implementation. So, yeah, I think that uh, we have to implement that, of course. Yeah, who is going to say something? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so um, I don't think that it's a good start or a, something like an help wanted. Maybe it's something that we have to take and someone will, uh, will take care of this. I can check that because I was uh, testing the Quotas plugin 030 
and I was also doing some uh, changes to the system test. So maybe I can check if I will be able to yeah, implement that, possibly. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I will just tag you here in the comment just to say that uh, Lukas will, will go and see if uh, he can implement this one without yeah. assigning so that you can come back with feedback uh, and if not, someone else will take care of this, okay? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Lukas. So I guess we can also remove its triage. Uh, yeah, we are at the end. Yeah, just waiting uh, for this one, leaving this one for the next community meeting. So back to our doc. There is nothing more than, um, yeah, just saying something around the stream Zicon. Uh, you know, the call for paper closed on March 10th. Now the, the program committee is kind of working on the evaluation. Uh, the deadline for the members is 26 of March. So uh, at some point, the beginning of April, we will uh, kind of um, yeah announce the, the, the speakers. So send emails to the speaker for their accepted talks. And, um, and publish the agenda for the event, which will take on place on um, May 22nd. So of course, thank you very much for all the people that send proposals. We have got a bunch of proposals, I would say. Uh, anyway, as you know, the, the event will be just off day in the European afternoon. We will have uh, two different tracks, so, and four sessions per track. So in the end, we have to accept uh, eight um, talks. Uh, I would say it will be really difficult because we have got a lot of interesting proposals. Uh, but yeah, that's the, 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 the problem of organizing, you know, a, a conference and then, um, um, yeah, picking the right proposals uh, across a huge number of proposals where all of them are really interesting. So yeah, let's keep an eye on this and um, we will announce speakers and agenda pretty soon, at the beginning of April, let's just say it. So we are in the end. Any other business or uh, other questions? Uh, again, doubts, something you want to share? Or as I said, it was going to be a short one. It seems not. So, thank you very much everyone for joining and uh, yep, yeah, see you the next community meeting in two weeks. See you guys. Thanks. So, thank bye. you. Bye. Thanks, bye.